What is Google Lens? What can you do with it and does it actually work? We're going to explore all that on the Google Pixel 3a right now. Let's do this. And welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with a Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadget apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on with today's show all about the Google Lens. So today we're going to try it on a bunch of things, see what Google Lens does, and especially about being able to bring augmented reality and tigers into your living room. Yep, let's go through all that. Let's test the shopping ability. So I've got some pair of shoes here. Let's go fire up the camera, click on more, and in here let's choose lens. Right, when that comes up, choose the shopping little icon on the right hand side, it says shopping, and snap a picture of the object or just tap it. See the little blue dot? That means it's recognized some items. And there we go, some other related shoes which fit that criteria. Related results is what they're calling it. Okay, what about if we make it slightly more difficult? Because I mean, the shoes are nicely laid out. Let's see what else it can do. So let's take the shoes and let's reposition them in a way that's not kind of your typical thing. Let's see if Google Lens are gonna be able to detect what that is. Right, once again, I'm in Lens, I've got the shopping going, press the button, looking for related items, and wow, it actually did a better job finding a good match. So shopping seems to work pretty well. Okay, what else can we test? All right, let's test the translation feature. So here I've printed out two menus, one in Chinese and one in Hebrew. Let's fire up the Google Lens. So click on More, click on Lens, and click on Translate, which is the first icon on the left-hand side. Right, let's point it at the menu and see what it does. And bam, all right, straight away it already picks up. The nice thing is it auto-detected the language. If you notice the top says Hebrew to English, automatically detected it and allows you to read it straight away. But what happens when you move to another language immediately? Does it actually do a good job as well? Okay, there we go. It took a little second and it worked out that it is Chinese and it already started to detect the language and then translate it. Let's move it back down to the Hebrew one. See how quickly that auto detects. There we go. So that's pretty quick, right? Now, I will say this is not 100% accurate. Google has recently updated its software to be able to recognize over 100 languages, which is super, super impressive. And look how quickly it's able to auto-detect that languages. So it is pretty impressive. You do get the gist of what's being said, but it is not 100% accurate, but way better than being able to take a rough estimate or a guess as what you're trying to order on a menu. Now, Final test is I'm going to write something in Afrikaans and I'm going to see what it does, whether it's able to pick that up. So my writing is not the best, as you can see. I wrote that, what have you seen, which basically means what have you seen, and it kind of picks it up. And But again, you can see you can clearly understand the meaning. Could be just my dodgy handwriting too. Okay, let's test the dining option. Now, what this is supposed to do, you're supposed to point it at a menu and it will give you recommendations. So Google Lens, choose the little knife and fork situation and point it at the menu. This happened to be the McDonald's menu. Um, yeah, as you can see, it does recognize the text, but it doesn't really understand what to do with it. So if I look at the text, I can see it's highlighted. If I press the button, like almost to take a picture, it kind of doesn't know what to do with it again. Maybe I need to tap on something on the screen. Okay, breakfast, let's tap that. Okay, so what this does, it recognizes the text and it does a Google search on that word text, but nothing to do with this specific restaurant or the specific menu per se, which is what this is supposed to do. Let's try another test. This time I'm gonna go back to the McDonald's main menu and this time I'm gonna choose something that is only available at McDonald's, or it's a McDonald's term, I suppose. So point at it, you see it's already highlights the words. Let's take a picture. It's gonna tell me what to look for. There's too much text on the screen. Great, I'm gonna select something that's McDonald's specific, like the quarter pounder, and now it absolutely recognizes what that is. Now, I'm assuming it's recognizing the text more than the picture. Otherwise, I assume the picture would be highlighted. But again, now I'm getting some information about this specific item, which is kind of technically what you're supposed to do with this. 
Right, let's see what it does with this replica of a famous statue. So what I'm gonna do is point it at it, use the default search. Oh, there's a little dot already, click on that. And that should give me some results. Yes, and it does. Look, it gives me more information about this. So if you're a tourist, you happen to be looking at landmarks or popular artwork, you should be able to simply point the camera at it and get more information. Okay, that is really useful when you travel. Let's test this with other objects around the house because it's supposed to give me related results for things that it sees. So here's just a normal chair. Press a little dot and okay, there we go. So it did recognize it's a chair. It gave me some shopping option along with some price ranges. Okay, this is pretty useful, I suppose. Like imagine being out somewhere, seeing certain decoration, thinking kind of, oh, this would be nice at home. What else can it look up? Yeah, I can see a use for that. Right, what about some food items? Let's check on that. So here's a regular jar. Click on it. Look, that will actually work quite quickly. So there it is. It recognizes what it is. It recognizes where to buy it from. All right, that's impressive. Let's see if we don't have the label. We don't have the food item and maybe just kind of the nutritional facts. Let's go check that out. See what it does. It's trying. What, oh, go to the barcode. It actually gives you a message saying scan the barcode. And as soon as you do that, bang. All right, there we go. So if you're going to scan food items, go for the barcode. You're always going to get much better results that way. Let's up the ante a little bit. This is the m and Snack Mix. Let's see what it does with that. And the first thing it does is it identifies the toy at the bottom of the packaging and tries to give me related toys. Not sure if that works. Then there's another little dot, press on that. Okay, here is where it actually recognizes that fact that it's a food item. Now, being a food item, obviously we know that barcode works best. Let's try that, flip this thing over. There's the barcode, tap on that. Let's see what it does. And instantly it recognizes it. So Google's also experimenting with bringing the real world and the virtual world together in something called mixed reality. So for example, go to a search for Tiger. When that comes up, you'll have an option called View in 3D. If you press on that, you'll be able to get your tiger basically uh, in 3D. Spin it around, turn it upside down, uh, no inside out, but all this kind of 360 degrees around this tiger. But there is more. Now you have the, also the option to view in your space. Select it, point on the floor somewhere, and voila, you have a tiger in your own house. What's pretty cool is that it retains its dimensions, allows you to move it around if you want to. You can actually walk around it, it will stay still. And of course, you can hear the pretty cool sound effect. Now, this doesn't work with every search result, of course. So it's also got a couple of predetermined ones. The other one that I managed to find was Rottweiler. That was another one that actually worked. And I can have a Rottweiler in my living room if I want it. Now, there are apparently some other options like a panda or the Mars Rover Explorer machine thingy. I couldn't find those, but I have seen other people that it works for. So I'm not sure if they're rolling this out in stages or in location. I'm not really sure. But some of them actually do appear. Look, I think this is pretty cool. I think being able to take the virtual world and mix it with the real world with mixed reality is great. Imagine being able to go to a shop, taking a picture of an item and then be able to kind of experiment with this at your house to see what it would look like. You could do the same with fashion, see whether an outfit would look good or bad on you. So I think there's lots and lots of potential for where mixed reality is going to go, complete with, of course, navigations, which they've already got on the Google Pixel 3a, which gives you AR signals as you're turning left and right. I have done a video about that. I will link it in the cards above here. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit the head below to subscribe. Check out some of the other cool videos around here. And I'll see you over there.